Rebellia shouted, Your Majesty, he can't do this. She is the Empress of the Empire, the mother of the people, and the Emperor's only companion. How could he throw her like this? Alexander, the Emperor, stated, Don't be arrogant. He have never recognized her as his only companion, have she forgotten the existence of Empress Aisha? Rebellia replied, She is just a concubine, not an empress. The emperor stated, She is still under a great illusion. What does it mean to be in the position of the empress? He can take it away with the lift of a finger. A woman who can't even follow Aisha's footsteps is greedy for the status of an empress and wants him by her side. What a pity. The emperor continued she is just a decoration to borrow the power of Duke Blanche, he have never loved or cared for her. Later on, his love is only for Aisha. Then the scene changed the reader shouted, it's so frustrating. Why can't she just dump him and leave alone? Flower from Another World, a romance fantasy novel with a common storyline. In which the protagonist eventually became the empress and won the emperor's love. The Empress Rebellia suffered in a cold room and died of an illness, while those two had fun together. She looked at the clock, it was 3 o'clock a.m., she thought, now it's time to sleep. The next thing she saw was a old-fashioned and colorful furniture, people in dresses, and this look, she had become Rebellia. She did everything so that he could wake up, but nothing worked, so she had to admit that this wasn't a dream. Rebellia asked the maids if she could be made as pretty as possible, and they were happy to take the order. Rebellia thought they sincerely wanted her to be loved by the emperor. She felt a bit sorry, but she couldn't help it because she couldn't live her life for someone else. After some time, the emperor asked why she wanted to meet him. Rebellia replied, Does there have to be a specific reason for a couple to meet each other? She thought she tried to understand the situation a bit. The relationship between the Emperor and Aisha was still in the early stages of the original story, when the Emperor had just begun to show interest in her. The Emperor asked if she had any change of heart, and Rebellia replied, Yes, please divorce her, Your Majesty. The Emperor was shocked, he stated. Did she forget who is in front of her? This is not the place to make jokes. Rebellia replied, it's not a joke. She have considered it for a long time and have come to the conclusion that the position of empress is too much for her. Emperor asks she have been carrying out her duties as empress for the past three years, and now suddenly, what happened? Rebellia continued, no, she just don't feel like she is worthy and fit for the empress position. The emperor asked if he had perhaps angered her because he didn't visit her for the past two weeks. He promised to see her every day in the future and be the best husband for her. Rebellia spoke, Your Majesty will surely find more suitable women to be his consort, and it would not be a problem to replace his empress with his concubine. The emperor replied, The concubine is only here for diplomacy with the holy country, he have no other explanation. Rebellia emphasized that it's not because of Aisha, she just realized that she doesn't deserve to be in this position. The emperor asked what she was going to do with Duke Blanchett. Rebellia thought of her family, how Duke Blanchett forced his eldest daughter to be crowned empress. She stated that she knows the imperial law requires the consent of both parties to proceed with the divorce, but in their case, between the empress and his majesty. The emperor stated that he cannot accept it, she can't just resign from the position of the empress. He suggested postponing the conversation for a moment. The emperor continued, saying that if there is something she wants, he will gift it to her. If she wants, she can do as she pleases, but they cannot get a divorce. Rebellia asked, so she can do anything as empress? The emperor replied, yes, she can. After that, Rebellia thought it was enough. If he doesn't want to divorce her, she can divorce him. Now she just needed to make a plan. Suddenly, Rebellia saw Aisha, Rebellia thought, just ignore her and go. Aisha spoke, it's been a long time, it's nice to meet her in a place like this. Rebellia replied, of course, so, what is the concubine doing here? Aisha replied that she came to meet the emperor. Rebellia stated that she had to say goodbye because she had business to do. 
Aisha spoke, suggesting they should be close since they are fellow women, she meant that they should talk to each other honestly. Was that a new way to gain His Majesty's attention? Rebellia thought that when she read the novel, she believed she was an innocent person, but now she didn't think so. Rebellia stated, It's really funny. It's as if she is making a fuss just to get attention from the emperor. Aisha asked if his attention didn't mean anything. Rebellia replied, Yes, she can take it all, she doesn't need it, and she doesn't care. She doesn't think she will be able to go back to her old life, so it's okay to enjoy this. After some time, Aisha shouted, What is going on? Rebellia replied that she is moving. The Empress Palace is being renovated. Aisha asked, But why are she moving to her palace? Rebellia thought the Empress's palace is spacious, luxurious, filled with antique items, but compared to the Emperor and Concubine Palace, the Empress's palace is far from good. Since the Emperor doesn't really care about Rebellia, the servants within the Empress's palace don't take care of it at all. Rebellia stated if she doesn't to stay here, then she can got to Empress's palace. Aisha stated, and why does she have to get out, this is his palace. Rebellia replied, fine, then it looks like we will be living together for a while. We are both women, so we have to get to know each other. After some time, the emperor came and asked if it's true that she insisted on living in the concubine palace. In the history of the empire, there has never been an empress who wanted the concubine palace. Rebellia replied, your majesty, as far as she knows, he is the one who told her she can do as she pleases, she just did what he told her. Emperor stated, do as she please, she didn't know she were so stubborn, it's not easy living with other people. In order to maintain the honor of the imperial family, don't make any unnecessary fuss, he will also order the queen to do the same. Rebellia replied, she can't promise that, your majesty, because it would depend on the words and actions of the queen. After some days, Rebellia thought, what is this, nothing has really happened. Rebellia ran into Aisha often, every time that happened, Aisha acted as if Rebellia didn't exist and ignored her, but it was clear she didn't want to start a fuss. Rebellia thought she had to do worse than this, she asked the maids for new clothes. Then the designer came and asked, how about this dress, it looks like it would go perfectly with her hair color, she can check the catalog. Rebellia thought the clothes were so nice and beautiful, if she looked unaccustomed to luxury items, they would be suspicious. She really didn't like doing this, but it was the only way she could get out of the palace, Rebellia stated, ugly clothes like this, who else would want to make them but him? Rebellia stated that if she wore this rustic thing and went out, she was sure it would become a laughing stock for everyone. He probably didn't come here to tell her to wear this old mat, she asked if there were more expensive items, if there was nothing else. The designer replied that he hadn't brought it up yet, but if she waited two more months, he would offer more samples. Rebellia replied, do he wish for his death, he told her to wear a swimsuit for two months, don't lie. She heard that Aisha is doing great because next week, she will be going to the palace to see him. The designer replied, but this design is the one that fits the empress more. Rebellia stated, so she don't know whether it's fitting or not, he is the one who decides. It seems that he is not able to distinguish who has the highest status, this time, shall she take the opportunity to let him experience it firsthand? The designer pleaded for mercy, and then stated he would immediately call an assistant to bring the samples. After some time, the new samples came, the designer asked, there are a total of 14 samples, which one does she want to choose? Rebellia replied, all of them. Then the scene changed, one person stated, the queen bought all the top class crystals just to hoard, she also buys clothes, even several times higher than the original price. How is it possible to consume 0.02% of the military budget in just one day? The other person spoke, anything. That person is wasting a position that requires high responsibility like an empress. The current situation suggests that Aisha is the one who is more suitable for the position. The emperor stated, are they done talking? Out of curiosity, he silently watched to see where things went. 
a nation's finance that was compared to the Nixos River, filled with gold. How could it be swayed by just a few dresses? Emperor asked, as he doubt his any decision? The minister replied, How dare he doubt his majesty's judgment? It's only because he is too worried about the country that he used his words wrong. The emperor ordered him to resign from his position as minister of state and be imprisoned in his home for three months. He almost forgot the power of the queen and its authority over the country. The secretary was instructed to find Rebellia ten times more gorgeous dresses this time. After the meeting with the emperor stated the minister of finance, who also contributed to the maintenance of the throne, he was given a position higher than his status. Still not satisfied, he continued to cling to the noble title like a blood-sucking bat. The secretary replied that if he punished him as a noble, he would be severely rebuffed. The emperor stated that the ultimate method here is fear, abnormalities, severity, purging without mercy. These are all strengths of his. If he cared about being rebuffed, he wouldn't have cut his father's throat with his own hands. On the other hand, Rebellia was shocked to see the new clothes, which were very costly and beautiful. The servant told her that this garment piece was made by the sincere heart of his majesty, and a dress like this is worth a building. Rebellia was shocked and thought that if she dropped one hint of sweat on this dress, she couldn't forgive herself. The servant spoke about a handwritten postcard from his majesty, in which the emperor wrote that he didn't know if this would suit her elevated eyes, hoping that the next time they meet, she would wear this dress. Rebellia thought, after all, why does he have any intentions? The emperor didn't care about Rebellia in the first place. The maid said it's really beautiful. She had never seen or heard of such a beautiful dress like this, congratulating her for receiving such a high-value gift. After receiving the gift, she should try it at once, and they would help her. Rebellia replied that she wouldn't wear it because he intended to divorce that person. She couldn't just accept a gift from a man she was about to break up with, and threw these clothes into her wardrobe. Then, at the Friday night party, in the past, Rebellia planned this event very well and elegantly decorated it. While locating resources in the right places, she ensured it did not detract from the royal family. Count Bartlett stated, It's been a grand party again this time, Your Majesty. Rebellia thought of him, as a minor character actively supporting Aisha to win the Queen's chair from her. Rebellia replied, He has to get rid of that kind of lame hypocrisy, Count asked what she meant by fake. Rebellia stated that the gratitude took three years to spark up, and that surprised her. Rebellia was going back and thought about the person, who was supposed to hear those grateful words, who had also disappeared. Then the emperor arrived. Rebellia thought, that's the ultimate good-looking man, also known as one fine man who only appears once in a hundred years. Suddenly, Aisha came and stated that she was so happy to see his majesty, even if they met every day she still missed him. She had been looking forward to this party for so long, and every day and every week were so interesting, because this is where the whole family gathers. Rebellia asked, the whole family, what did she mean? Then, Rebellia thought it would be a pity to pay attention to these shallow tricks. She had another purpose in attending this party anyway. She then accidentally threw wine at Marcus Wilhelm and stated, Oh my gosh, I am sorry, my hands are too slippery. Marcus Wilhelm replied, Obviously, she just did it deliberately. Marcus Wilhelm cut his sentence short when she told him her hand slipped. Rebellia shouted, No, once again, and slapped him. She thought, How dare he touch her maid while he already has a wife and children? In the past, her maid was so scared and said, These days, Marcus Wilhelm sends letters and comes to her house, she's so scared, she is going to die. She heard that a daughter of the Count was married to a poor family, as if she was sold off because of him. He's so powerful, there is no way to stop him. Rebellia was so upset and slapped him continuously. This is the quickest revenge among the actions she can take, after all, no one can stop her here except the Emperor. The Emperor stated, Rebellia. She thought he can't help but stop her, but she has one last thing to finish, 
to aim accurately is worthwhile to practice. The emperor arrived, and Rebellia thought he seems to be in a bad mood. The empress did this in the banquet hall. She did this in a public place to show such trash harshness and get a divorce, just rejoice to her heart's content, he will make her disappear smoothly. The emperor stated her hands are in a mess, and Rebellia thought, is he crazy? The emperor stated, call the imperial physician to heal the empress's hand. Rebellia spoke, your majesty. Marquis Wilhelm also needs the imperial physician, he looks like he has fainted. The emperor replied, if she thinks so, feel free. Rebellia thought she didn't get it, it looks like he is protecting her, in the end, he didn't even rebuke her for taking such sudden action in public. The emperor looked at her, and Rebellia thought she was startled, what's with his smiling face? If she wasn't angry, it would be a big deal. The nobles started chatting, his majesty the emperor takes such great care of her, we didn't know that they had such a golden thread. What happened between the two of them, His Majesty the Emperor, who only cared for Her Highness the Imperial Concubine, what did Her Majesty the Empress do? Rebellia thought, no, that's not it, she didn't do anything, rather, she did nothing but look hateful. After the treatment, the Emperor stated, let's have a dinner party, she must be very hungry because of the late dinner, then please excuse us. Rebellia thought Aisha looked impatient, because people were mumbling like this. There might be a speculative article about her relationship with the emperor in the morning newspaper. The whole process was as smooth as flowing water, could this be the consciousness of public opinion of the divorce proposal? The emperor stated, this place is not for official business but for small exchanges between palace officials, so don't feel too pressured. Rebellia thought it would be an exaggeration to say nothing was prepared, she would just eat, she must be full of anger to do evil deeds. Emperor stated, Empress, help yourself, she used a lot of strength just now. Aisha spoke, the dress is so beautiful, your majesty the empress. She heard that the empress got fourteen outfits, but simple design suits me better than such a fancy style. She finds it a bit burdensome to buy such expensive things, his majesty the emperor told her to buy something more expensive but isn't it too extravagant? The emperor stated, speaking of dresses, why didn't Rebellia wear the dress he gave her, was that not enough for her? Rebellia thought, why is he saying something like this at this time, she has refused to have a good relationship with him. Oh no, they are already misunderstanding, there will be public opinion, all right, so she will have to make sure that he never talks about gifts again. Rebellia stated, her nobility can't be matched with such clothes, a city or a castle would be better. The emperor replied, just a city, that's not enough, even if he could get another empire, she would not be replaced, she is the pillar of this empire and his only empress. Rebellia was shocked and thought, a city? Why does it sound so simple? Aisha spoke, she doesn't mind if he doesn't give her such an expensive dress, all she needs is a dress made of silk and flax. People's values won't change with their clothes, as long as His Majesty the Emperor is by her side. The Emperor stated, what is she talking about? She doesn't have treasures. He has given her a budget worthy of her position as the imperial concubine of the empire. Failure to acknowledge what she has is a deception for those who have nothing. How can she fulfill her responsibilities to the people without understanding what she has? Modesty and humility are not the only virtues of the imperial family. For the sake of the whole people of the empire, it's to take action that does not undermine the authority of the imperial family. Does she understand what he means? Aisha replied, yes, she will keep that in mind. Rebellia thought she didn't think Aisha would remember this, but did the emperor ever point out something to Aisha in the original, in her memory, he didn't. Rebellia thought she was going to be a burden to the point where they would be tired of it. Rebellia shouted, the soup is cold, reheat it, get rid of the lamb dishes in front of her, how nauseating. Nobles are mumbling, her majesty the empress was originally very gentle, merciful, and quiet, but why has she changed like this? On the other hand, 
Her Highness the Imperial Concubine seems to have no reluctance, she is really a slender and quiet woman. After the dinner party, nothing special happened for a while until an invitation reached her. Rebellia thought Duchess Selimon, she hadn't heard of this name before, not in the original. There was nothing in the documents about Rebellia that she went through last time. Rebellia was curious as to why she invited her, it would be better to go out than to stay in the room. She needed information, and there would be more information than what could be found by asking the maids, or searching through the books in the library. The ladies' tea party was one of the best places to get such vivid information. At the tea party, judging from the title of Duchess Selimon and her age, she seemed to be the most influential figure in this place, so it would be better to be cautious. The Duchess spoke, Empress, wear such a truly luxurious dress. Rebellia thought the Duchess didn't have a friendly relationship with her. Among the nobility of the empire, talk of money was considered very vulgar. Therefore, even at nobility parties, talking about money would be considered a kind of taboo. The Duchess deliberately told her that the dress was luxurious, the Duchess again stated, the dress is very luxurious, only the dress. Rebellia replied, well, it's from Winston Mystic, there are many designs for her, she just has to choose among them, by the way, did she place an order there? The Duchess said she should get up as a host, she has to manage the party. Rebellia thought she is running away, that's how Mao Rebellia turned the table. Then Aisha came and stated, Your Majesty the Empress, it's nice to meet her in a place like this. According to imperial etiquette, if a higher-ranking person is sitting and somebody is approaching, they don't have to stand up to greet. This etiquette was created, so that a high-ranking person wouldn't feel awkward being the only one sitting. All of them are in the mode that way. Rebellia thought no. It's clear, the reason Duchess invited her may be Aisha's influence. It seems like she asked the Duchess to get them together at the same place, and deliberately made herself noticeable to insult Rebellia. If so, she doesn't have to be here any longer, he threw the tea. Aisha apologized, stating that she has just been to the Empire, so she is not used to the rules of etiquette, she will be careful next time. Rebellia stated that the tea was spilled, so she will be leaving. From now on, she would better be careful after her behavior in front of the Empress, Aisha was embarrassed and shocked. Then the scene changed, the Emperor told her to deal with such kinds of things on her own. As the Emperor of the Empire, he is not idle enough to intervene in the commotion at the tea party, Aisha replied that she bothered him. She was afraid that he would be sad if she didn't adapt well to the Empire. She was just telling him how she is doing, but her thoughts bothered him, and he was busy. The Emperor spoke, Don't say so, how could he be bothered? The Emperor thought he knew it very well, why does she have to tell such a useless story right now? The Emperor asked what she wanted him to do. Aisha replied that she heard, after the tea party, ladies insulting Her Majesty the Empress. She wanted him to express her concern to Empress directly. At night, the Emperor thought the first time he saw her, he knew right away that she was not an ordinary woman. The fact that he personally rebuked Rebellia seriously, there is no such thing as naivety or indifference. Aisha and he are the same kind of person, they pretend to be good people to hide their devilish selves. But he would have hated if she had been really kind, then he weighed the pros and cons, what he hates, and what he can accept. Afterward, he gave her the position of empress, but lately, somehow, it's getting more demanding, and things are starting to bother him. He thinks he knows what the reason is, Rebellia opened the door. Rebellia thought, what is this? Why does she feel itchy like this suddenly? The emperor asked, why is that? is the light too strong? Rebellia replied, maybe it's the lighting. It's not my face blushing. It's just due to the light that she feel a bit warm. The emperor thought he wasn't really making fun of people, but recently, Rebellia's responses had been quite different. She looked like a cat with her hair up and down. She used to resemble more of a wooden doll than a human. The emperor brought up the last dinner party, admitting he still didn't understand why he behaved that way. 
he apologized for her embarrassment and thanked her for helping make Marquis Wilhelm go away. The Marquis had intervened to increase the power of Rudikin's throne, which wasn't exactly illegal, but there was circumstantial evidence of siphoning off taxes and military supplies. Seizing the opportunity, the Emperor decided to send most of his doctors to investigate Marquis Wilhelm. Eight weeks would be sufficient for the investigation. Rebellia asked what she had to do, and the Emperor replied that the Marchioness Wilhelm was very famous. Many women in the palace held a grudge against him, and he thought they could have a good cooperative relationship. Although their public relationship seemed dry, not many people would expect them to be cooperating. Rebellia declined the offer, stating it's not just external, it's actually dry. The emperor said if she thought so, he had no choice, but he hinted that he might offer something she likes again, he was determined to do anything to fulfill her desires. Rebellia requested him to stop using such horrible language and expressed her unwillingness to give up. She was willing to go through challenges if she wanted something, acknowledging that they could be damaging to each other. The emperor wondered what was happening, feeling a desire to touch her. He found her so soft, and he wanted her in his own hands. Is this what it's all about? The desire for talent? He wants to touch her lips. It's difficult to form a proper partnership with Rebellia. Suddenly, the emperor asked, What is she doing? Rebellia replied, Are he crazy? We are getting a divorce. She don't know where something like that is coming from. You idiot, get out of here. The emperor was shocked. Rebellia thought, Isn't that crazy? Did he dare to do that with an impending divorce? She don't think he even has feelings for her. That's because the emperor only has Aisha, he is the man in a romance fantasy. In the original, Rebellia tried to chase him for three years, but he never looked at her. It's absurd that he's suddenly interested, trying to kiss someone he doesn't care about. In the morning, Rebellia was surprised that she kicked him out first. However, she regretted it afterward because if she laid a hand on the king's face, there might be a law that mandates the death penalty unconditionally. If the emperor wanted to punish her for that, there was no way she could resist. Seeing as he hadn't said anything so far, it meant he was going to let it go, she had a lot of other things on her mind. The empress was in charge of affairs within the court, support for cultural development, and other responsibilities. These were supposed to be shared by the empress and the noble consort, but Aisha was exempt from all duties because she had just arrived. Which are a booth half years ago now, exactly when she come. On the other hand, Aisha told the maids that the emperor said her skin was very clear, and he also liked her hair color. Suddenly, Rebellia came and exclaimed, Oh my goodness! She was working her head off, and Aisha was playing with the maids and talking about her hair. Here is the job. Why don't she stop being a lazy woman? Rebellia thought to be at peace. She left all the work to Aisha. Of course, Aisha didn't mean to work fine. Aisha asked him she didn't have anything ready yet, so give her the secretary time to learn things. Rebellia replied, What have she been doing for the last half year without even noticing? This is how it all worked out. Of course, Everything didn't go well since Aisha did nothing fine, all the work in the palace is disturbed. The palace workers came and asked Rebellia to do her business as before, nothing will ever work in the palace. They begged as the mother of all imperial people to have mercy and compassion, Rebellia thought it's not easy for her to play and act like this, but she can't help it. If she gets her job back now, everything will go back to the way it was, Rebellia stated, who asked them to come here? Didn't she say she was done? What is their owner doing? They replied, the assistant did his best to assist her, but that's not enough. Rebellia stated, didn't they say it was noisy, they are all out of her business. In this way, everyone was kicked away, and she continued to strike again. It seems that people who were evicted invited emperor to come. The emperor stated he is asking her to do this, Will she take care of the affairs of the palace again? He is responsible for educating the noble consort, and then the empress's workload will be much reduced. He has been inconsiderate and made things worse, he doesn't ask her to forgive him fully.
but he will bet his name on it and try not to let it happen again. He has no authority to speak to her about the affairs of the palace, so this is a request, not an order, as emperor, a favor to the empress, a companion to govern the empire. Rebellia thought she didn't expect such a sincere apology, Rebellia stated, he said he would try not to let this happen again. In that case, please write a memorandum, a memorandum to focus on educating the noble consort and to share the work fairly. The emperor stated, so it's a memorandum, there should be a condition, which do she prefer? Rebellia replied, divorce. Emperor stated, fine, he's not gonna break the pact forever away, he will swear by his name. Rebellia thought, just give her divorce, and let someone else be his empress, and it will all work out, why is he picking such a complicated road? After that, Aisha had five teachers, the class time alone from right after breakfast to bedtime, was almost ten hours a day. Rebellia worked so hard that she could be called a bad girl. She worked day and night because it is very difficult for the palace to become normal. The maids are chatting and appreciating the empress, saying that she is trying to make sure they don't suffer the same thing. One of the maids tells them she went to inform the empress, and the empress replies she didn't mean to be praised. Then, at the tea party, there are plenty of flowers, Aisha tells the other noble ladies that these flowers were given by the emperor. Noble ladies speak, after all, the emperor cares a lot about the imperial concubine, how romantic it is. One of the ladies asks what she is studying, Aisha replies she just wants to work hard because she hasn't helped much, saying, she just study a bit every day. Suddenly, Aisha feels dizzy, and the noble lady tells the servant to call the doctor, Aisha states there is no need and apologizes for showing her this look. She has to shoulder the responsibility and doesn't want to bother the empress anymore. One of the noble ladies states that this never happened in the history of the empire. The empress assaulted the marquis at the dinner party. The other lady says her father never told her anything like this. The noble person emphasizes that her father is the one who directly faces the emperor and the empress. Ladies may not know, but men who participate in politics must be more rational. The noble lady replies that he can speak directly to the emperor about the empress because he is rational. The nobleman gets frightened and states he can't do such a thing. He is a newcomer who has just joined the government. Aisha states if he could speak to his majesty, it would be of great help to her. She will try her best to make sure the emperor doesn't get too angry. The young man gets up and states he will speak directly to the emperor. Aisha thought it was really easy, she liked kids who didn't know anything. Old ladies wouldn't react emotionally like this, so it was hard to incite them. It was natural for a young man to get caught up in young ladies to be the least rational. It was good to create such a composition. The next morning, the young count thought he decided to help other friends. Many young nobles unanimously suggested, what's going on? Rebellia dared to bring tears to the eyes of the noble imperial concubine. It's the imperial concubine that suits the position of empress. As a young man who thinks of the country, he can't leave it unattended. This is out of patriotism and loyalty. The young count spoke, Your Majesty, the respectful emperor, before the full-fledged meeting begins, he would like to say something. Seven young nobles have something to say about Empress Rebellia, here is the report they investigated. Emperor stated, it's an agenda for public debate and punishment for the Empress's atrocities, is this really his opinion, young noble? The young count replied, yes, that's right, after that, the young count presented the whole investigation report. After hearing the report, the emperor asked, so, is this his opinion? or was this opinion influenced by anyone else? The young count replied, this is what six of his friends and he have investigated and prepared together. The emperor retorted, defect that there are only seven stupid people in this place. Have he ever thought about why the empress did such a thing? Well, if their heads aren't attached as decoration, then read it, all the lords. In the report, all the charges, including exporting military supplies and embezzling taxes, were included against Marquis Wilhelm. Nobles mumbled that this evidence is too clear, 
they didn't know he was such a man. The emperor stated that Marquis was about to flee to the other kingdom. After knowing this, the empress took the risk of her reputation getting tarnished and handled it with her own hands. The young count thought he didn't know this had such a deep meaning. If the empress's actions had such a meaning, then what happened to him? The young count suggested, if so, how about hiring an outsider for the affairs of the palace? This is a violation of the duties of an empress. The emperor stated look at what the palace was like. When imperial concubine Aisha was in charge of the interior affairs, it was written over there, so open his eyes wide and take a look. The empress must have realized that everything would be paralyzed if the empress was not able to work, so to prevent such a case, the empress tried to use external power. So now, there is only one problem left, how to deal with the seven idiots who defamed the empress. Without knowing the circumstances, take young Count Drape and cut off his useless tongue. On the other hand, Rebellia thought the time has come to raise the agenda for her divorce at the National Assembly, but there is no news. Then the scene changed. Aisha thought she used these dummies to prepare the speech, but how great can these young, immature people be? She had no expectations. Suddenly, Aisha got the idea that Rebellia wouldn't be able to do this, she won't be able to be so arrogant for long. It's October now, the month when barely turns yellow and birds start to make nests. To welcome a successful season, she wants to host an event to promote world culture as a goddess. After some days at the party, Aisha came, the dress above the knees was too exposing in this kingdom. Aisha thought this is not the problem. Now there is her influence in this palace, so no one objects to her. However, Rebellia is the issue, the woman that can steal everyone's attention, even the emperor. This won't be an exception. She will wear something to stand out, a glamorous dress with a lot of accessories. She was just a typical girl not long ago, so never mind. Just smile because Aisha is the main character today, no matter what everyone does. Aisha was shocked and thought Rebellia is a person from the kingdom. What's with her dress? Rebellia spoke, everyone must focus, Aisha can't utter a word, this is such an embarrassment. Now, crown princess, please continue. When Aisha tried to start her speech, she suddenly saw the emperor and asked Rebellia if she could cover her knees with this. Rebellia replied that she is not cold at all. Aisha started her speech by announcing that she will first talk about smartphones, in Korea, where she lived before, it was an indispensable item. Rebellia thought smartphones would be enough to interest the people in the kingdom, maybe they will think it's a magical item. One nobleman stated he couldn't believe it, questioning how something that fits in the palm of their hands can do so many things, he wanted to try that spectacular thing right away. Aisha was shocked and other nobles also asked if she could create a smartphone, expressing amazement at her talent. Aisha thought it was enough just to tell them a fascinating story, she just wanted to get attention. Then Aisha stated she can't make it, the nobleman asked why she couldn't make it, considering she is the goddess. Aisha replied she's just a normal undergraduate, not a scientist or technician. Rebellia thought universities here and in her home country were completely different. In this kingdom, if a person goes to a university, it means that they will devote their life to knowledge and education. Not many nobles even went to universities. Aisha mentioned the university, so she must be able to make the smartphone, and she is totally panicking. Rebellia stated for everyone to please be quiet and not see that the crown princess is struggling. Aisha thought it can't end like this she will become a joke in everyone's eyes. Aisha ordered the maids to bring it here, then thanked everyone for coming and she prepared a worldly dish for them. She prepared a buffet so that everyone could enjoy themselves and eat all that they wanted. Suddenly, they all criticized the food, saying it was sticky, strangely chewy, and too spicy. Rebellia tasted it and thought it tasted good. The people in the kingdom didn't seem to like the honey rice cakes and kimchi, even though back in Korea, foreigners found it strange. Aisha thought, how did things come to this, she was supposed to be the main character, and this reaction isn't good. Suddenly, Rebellia stated, 
Attention, everyone, she want to thank everyone who came here today. An imperial event is also her event, so she made a simple dish using the things that the crown princess prepared. The emperor asked if he could try it, and Rebellia inquired, Your Majesty, would he like to try it first? The emperor asked if there was something wrong with that, and Rebellia replied, She prepared a buffet, so please help yourself. After testing the food, the emperor stated, It tastes quite good. The spice was washed away in water, so it's not too much, the bacon and vegetables go well together, and the keys complement it perfectly. Rebellia thought the kimchi fried rice and kimchi pancakes suited their liking. Nobles enjoyed the food and asked for another plate, expressing their love for it. Aisha left during the tasting party, so Rebellia had to deal with it. She couldn't let the emperor see her slacking and not fulfilling her responsibility. Rebellia was curious about the emperor's plans. She agreed to have a meal with him because he helped her dry the food, but she wasn't sure what he was thinking. The emperor stated she didn't need to stay alert like that, though he still wanted to persuade her to be a collaborator. That wasn't the only reason. The emperor continued that he didn't know she was so talented. Rebellia replied that she had always been interested in researching cooking after getting married. The emperor asked, Is that so? Rebellia thought it was fascinating. She had read about his appearance in the original novel, and the only thing that came to her mind about the emperor was the tyrant, who only knew about Aisha. But looking at him by her side like this, he didn't seem to be that stubborn. Is it because he hasn't completely fallen for Aisha, Emperor stated, look at these flowers. They're beautiful but poisonous, in some places, they are used for making medicine. Rebellia asked, didn't we come here to look at flowers, the emperor replied, what if we did, enjoying the view of flowers with the only empress has its own charm. Rebellia stated, the only empress, are she talking about the empress who was abandoned for three years, emperor replied, yes, that's correct, it wasn't right. Rebellia thought he even used lust as an excuse, he mentioned a divorce, but he is acknowledging this. Has his attitude changed? No, he has a big ego, that acknowledgement wasn't sincere. Rebellia asked, are he not going to apologize? Emperor replied, he can insincerely apologize as many times as she want, so that she won't bring up the divorce again. The emperor continued, that's not what she want, and it goes the same for him. Someday, he will truly feel apologetic to her. Forget about it, I have been saying nonsense again. Rebellia thought this is what she felt when she read the original novel, The Emperor Might Be a Sociopath. Rebellia emphasized that she doesn't understand what he is saying, shouldn't some memories be forgotten? Emperor stated that she just wants to ignore his words, and he is pleased with that. It doesn't matter whether she believes it or not, bringing her here to see the flowers is not dangerous. They are just here to see the flowers. Rebellia thought, is this man taking advantage of his beauty with her? Fine, just let him be. She won't fall for it, she would rather die than fall in love with the emperor. Then the emperor kissed her hand, Rebellia asked, what was that? We are about to get a divorce, emperor replied. It's just how he is supposed to treat a lady. After that, Rebellia went into the room and thought that he doesn't take loyalty seriously at all. He will flirt with any girl to get what he wants. The emperor thought, what's wrong with him? He is being strange today and it's like he is drunk. Nobles are mumbling that the empress was such a wise lady, loyal to her duties. She had such a noble spirit, sacrificing reputation to change the law. On the other hand, Aisha was in her room and had not eaten for two days, Aisha thought it was so strange. Why did Rebellia have the idea to make Korean dishes, she has lived her whole life here. For some reason, Rebellia knows about Korean culture, if that's the case, she came to this world from Korea. No, it can't be, it's most probable that Rebellia overheard and learned Korean culture from somewhere. But how? the only contact with in the two worlds is the goddess. The people who came from the other world spread the new culture and help others, the new culture was spread widely and recorded. It's impossible that only Rebellia knows it, 
and others don't. Her relationship with the emperor and the social status that she worked so hard for are all messed up. Then the scene changes. Rebellia is at La Mancha Street, like a kind of black market. Rebellia thinks it's definitely not a place for the emperor, but she has no other choice. The emperor has been strange these days. To be more exact, a clearer situation is needed for the divorce. Spending all the money in a place like this will surely be considered a disgrace to the imperial family, but she is doomed. Rebellia wanted to use the money on suspicious magical items such as cursed dolls. But the last store, the shop owner, says they will only sell top-notch products, he is sure the emperor will also enjoy. Rebellia thought she wanted to escape from this world, everyone will think she is buying stuff for the emperor. Suddenly, people are gathering. Rebellia asks the guardian what people are gathering and talking about, he replies that they are having an auction. Rebellia thinks, why didn't he think of this? All the expensive and amazing things will be sold at the auction, she might find something spectacular that can help her divorce right away. The presenter announces that this is a slave auction, and prisoners of war are totally legal under the kingdom's slave law. Rebellia thinks about slaves, a product she had never considered. Come to think of it, one character had a slave background in the original piece. The first product is Banya, an adorable 18-year-old girl who is good at embroidery and also has a pretty face. The bidding starts at 50,000. People bid 80,000 and 90,000. Then Rebellia says, stop. It's an order from the Empress. It's her order. The Empress of Castia. The auction is over. Please return home, everyone. The presenter asks, Your Majesty, if they do that, they will suffer a great loss. When it comes to dealing with customers, trust is their livelihood. Rebellia says, Well, that makes sense. Here is an abstention. The moment she writes a number on here, all the slaves belong to her. Does that sound good? The presenter replies, Of course, thanks, Your Majesty. After that, Rebellia thinks this is the problem. They don't know anything not even the basics, if she lets them loose, they will only starve. Rebellia says, listen, she spent a lot of money on their purchase, from now on, they will consider her as their master, now they will work in the palace and help her. On the other hand, the secretary tells the emperor that the empress is currently in La Mancha town, it's a grand matter for the imperial family's reputation. The emperor cuts his sentence and says, that's not the problem. Does she not know how dangerous that place is, he has to go there by himself. The guardian tells the empress that the place where she resides is not suitable for heathen slaves to come and go. Please reconsider having them work in the imperial palace. Rebellia states noisily that she will take responsibility, so keep their mouths shut. Take them in and educate them three hours a day in imperial language, imperial society, imperial law, and all the basic studies. The young slave girl was crying while speaking. Thank you, your majesty, the empress, thank you very much. Rebellia thought they must have been very scared. Slaves never knew where they would go and what danger they would face. All of them are adults, so it should be okay to teach them for about a year, then give them to live alone and become independent. Suddenly, someone starts beating a slave and states, slaves are the same he should have put him to monsters as food. Rebellia thinks a whip to such a child, Rebellia says, stop it. She bought all the slaves, why is there still one left? The person replies, he is a slave, but he belongs to the auction house, so he is not for sale, as she can see, there is no marketability because one of his legs is limp. Rebellia states she will buy this child, and asks to gives her the whip, he doesn't seem to know how dangerous this whip is as a weapon. Rebellia strikes that whip on his face and states, even if he is a slave, he should not whip such a child. If he continues to stand there, she will let him realize the danger firsthand, then the person runs away. Rebellia thinks maybe she could get a divorce this time, the empress goes to the black market, buys suspicious goods and slaves, and even whips the merchant, the knights are fed up. Public opinion is on her side, and an agenda to depose the empress would be drawn up. Finally, she is free. The boy says, 
Thank you very much, your majesty. She asks his name, and he replies his name is Caleb. Rebellia thought he might be the sub-male lead of the original. Caleb was a character who appeared in the middle of the original story. He had been a slave from birth, but he was self-taught and rose to the level of Seventh Circle Archmage. With his outstanding magic talent, he made great contributions and shed his status as a slave. In the original story, he had a crush on Aisha. But this Caleb, who must be 16 now, is too small and looks young. Is it because he is still young? Suddenly, the emperor came and asked what Rebellia was doing. Rebellia replied that she was bringing Caleb there. Rebellia thought that he was asking her why she had gone to Mancha Street, but she knew why he had come. He must have been angry that the empress had gone to Mancha Street. The emperor asked who the scruffy guy was. Rebellia replied that this was the slave she had bought, Caleb. She had bought about 30 slaves just now. The emperor asked why she was trying to kiss that slave. Rebellia was shocked and shouted that the emperor was talking nonsense. She was just looking at his wounds. Everything should be misunderstood moderately. Was she shameless enough to kiss a child? The emperor stated that he was glad that nothing had happened. Rebellia thought that something was wrong with him. He seemed to be relieved. Rebellia asked if he was there to catch her because she wanted to go to Mancha Street. The emperor replied that no. Why would he be angry with her for such a thing? Especially since it was no one else but him. Rebellia asked what he meant. The emperor replied that he was the owner of this street. Didn't she think it was safe to keep the border between legal and illegal under surveillance? Only a few people, including the secretary, knew this fact. He was telling her because she was the empress, and she would know what this meant. Rebellia thought that there was no fool in the world who would tell such a secret to his soon-to-be-divorced wife. His confession was an expression of his will to never divorce her, while simultaneously making her more deeply involved with him. Now that she knew his secret, whether she wanted it or not, she would be more deeply involved with him. In the palace, Rebellia asked Caleb if he was still thinking the same thing. Caleb stated that he wanted to become her direct escort knight. Rebellia told him that becoming a knight is very difficult, and being a knight is more dangerous than he thinks. Rebellia thought that, she actually wants to give him a proper job since he is a talented child, Caleb spoke, saying he was born with a bit of magical power. He has kept it, and he says he is afraid his ability might be used for dangerous things, he will protect her with his powers. Rebellia told him he could work at the research academy so he can learn more about magic. Caleb stated there are many people about his age at the academy, and your majesty, please don't make him go to the academy, he was bullied by his peers when he was young. Rebellia replied she will not send him to the academy, so stop crying, Rebellia thought she planned to keep him with her for about a year anyway. Caleb stated she is not going to abandon him, he is so glad he can become her guardian knight now. This is the happiest day in his life. He will dedicate his body and soul to his only master, and if he has anything, even if it's just a thread, he will give it all to her. Rebellia asked what he was doing. Caleb replied he heard that's what slaves are supposed to say to their master. Rebellia stated he doesn't need to swear like that in the future. On the other hand, the emperor thought about that slave, he has been a thorn in his eyes. Does he need to stay that close to the person he is guarding? He is not helping anyone as a knight. No, it's her decision, she must have a reason for it, he can't let anything affect his relationship with her. An emperor of the kingdom has no reason to care about such trivial things, the list of all the embarrassing things Rebellia bought in La Mancha Street bothers him more. It's not normal for an empress to be spending money on La Mancha treats, and people are not talking about it well. It's difficult to find every person who saw the Empress that day and make them keep quiet. He can't draw a conclusion like this, it's much quicker to ask her. On the way to Rebellia, the Emperor thought, this is strange, these unplanned situations. They should make him feel bothered. He doesn't know why, but he doesn't hate it. It will be awkward if he gets straight to the point. Suddenly, the Emperor heard Caleb's voice, Your Majesty, this is awkward. This is too much for him, 
he is only a slave, he is grateful that he can stay by her side and serve her. Rebellia asked if he's really not going to take them, they are all clothes that she bought for him. The emperor thought, so it's that slave, it's the middle of the night, why are they talking in her bedroom like they are so close? The emperor entered the room and stated that he's sorry for bothering their conversation, but he couldn't help feeling curious about the situation. What kind of knight stays with the empress in the middle of the night? Rebellia replied, What did he say? He barged in here. Caleb asked for his forgiveness, that empress is not to blame for it, her presence pertains to him. She just called him in with good intentions, if he wants to punish anyone, let it be him. Rebellia stated he doesn't need to apologize. Can't she reward her subordinate for his loyalty? Does he think that she is cheating on him? She made it clear last time she doesn't see this child in that way. The emperor stated he is not suspecting her, he is just curious about whether that kid knows his place. Rebellia shouted, Are he suspecting an innocent child? She is the one who called Caleb, not the other way around. The emperor stated, Why is it like this? Then he thought, Why is he so impulsive around her? The emperor told Caleb he should get out. When Caleb was going back, he saw them with very cold looks on his face. The emperor stated, Do she know that the sharper she is, the greedier he is? Rebellia asked, Then doesn't he have to keep an eye on her more properly? If she gives him some advice, it's better if he doesn't do things that displease others. The emperor replied, Then what should he do to make the other person happy? That's what he is most curious about right now. Rebellia stated, first, he can forget about compromising and just divorce her easily. The emperor said, what a shame he can't do that, he would rather hear she tell him to kiss her feet. Rebellia emphasized, he is so full of himself, he doesn't care about her anyway. The emperor stated, is that really what she thinks, then he will show her, he will do whatever it takes to have her. On the contrary, it's amazing to him. He can finally show her his sincerity. Then the emperor kissed her. Rebellia slapped him, then stated, Get out. The emperor replied, He apologizes. After some time, the emperor thought it was irrational of him to do it, he got mad in front of her. He must resolve this at any cost. How can he think about her lips right now? The effect was just too intense for him, he couldn't think about anything else, only Rebellia can make him feel that way. The emperor thought about getting mad at her for talking to her live in the bedroom at midnight. What kind of relationship do we have after all? Concubines are normalized in the kingdom, so it's not strange for a married noble to have other lovers. It was also written in the marriage papers, why does it all bother him? Does he want an indifferent kind of relationship with Rebellia? His desire to have her, he think that's right, he is pleased about her. He wants to take walks with her and he wants to help her with other things besides missions. On the other hand, Rebellia thought, seriously, she is going crazy. Why did she kiss that person? He attacked her first, but she liked it, and she kissed him back, it hurts her ego. The next morning, a maid came and told her that the emperor wanted to see her. Rebellia thought, is he crazy? How can she meet him after what happened yesterday? Rebellia stated, Tell him he can't come because she is sick and that it's contagious, so they can't meet. The maid replied, he said if it's not today, then we will come tomorrow, or the day after that. Rebellia thought she wanted to ignore him no matter if he comes or not, but she didn't want to put the maid in an awkward situation. Rebellia stated, tell him she will be there in thirty minutes. The emperor observed her hair, guessing she had come without combing it. Rebellia stated she hoped he would briefly tell her about his business, as she was so busy that she couldn't even comb her hair. The emperor apologized for what happened last night, explaining that their lips met because his feelings overwhelmed him, she was surprised, so he wanted to apologize to her. Rebellia thought he felt guilty, but no, that wasn't it, she tried to forget it, so why did he bring it up? The emperor reflected on recent events, noticing that Rebellia seemed to be very weak against this kind of approach. Rebellia asked why the emperor wasn't too picky about his partners, 
was it not enough to have a kiss with the imperial concubine, especially when she is going to get a divorce soon? The emperor asked what she meant. Didn't she know he doesn't sleep with or kiss anyone? Rebellia was shocked. Emperor stated he didn't know why she was surprised. It was mentioned from the beginning of the marriage. Rebellia thought, so what he did yesterday is the emperor and Rebellia's first kiss. The emperor told her he never thought his credibility would be slow, but he swore to Mestapo, the unquenchable fire, that what he said is true. Rebellia thought the emperor wouldn't lie with Mestapo, but did he really have a kiss for the first time yesterday? She couldn't believe it. Rebellia stated if he had finished what he should say, she would leave, she thought she should think of a way to get out of here quickly. The emperor thought Rebellia pretended to be easygoing, but in fact, she was weak when it comes to contact with the opposite sex. He was worried that she might blush like that with others, should he increase the escort, or should he try to seduce her? Rebellia thought the empress went to the black market in person, and even participated in the bidding, people must be talking by now. There is nothing, not a single article, even in some cheap newspapers, well, maybe the empress expected something. It would be better if she tried going in the direction of tax and law business, like what she studied before. Women are not forbidden by law to do that here. Then the scene changed to Banya, the slave girl, who now became a maid, she said. Do he remember what the empress said after she saved them? Caleb replied, Do she mean how she hid their identity so that people won't look down on them because they were slaves? Banya stated yes, and when she thought about it, she thinks she can do anything for the empress. She was so happy that her reputation is enhanced, because they are working hard, even in her dreams, she had never thought that she would eat hard food and get to work this decently. She heard that if slaves like them are sold, they would serve the rich at night. Caleb asked, serve at night? Banya was embarrassed and stated it's nothing, and then she was gone. Caleb thought that's what he meant. Should he send Caleb to your bedroom tonight, your majesty? The butler asked. Rebellia was shocked and asked what he meant. The butler replied that he felt she was giving special attention to the boy. Rebellia wondered why he was thinking like that, then she remembered it was not his fault. It's not common for married people to have a lover in the empire, but she never looked at him in that way. Rebellia stated that she kept him with her to protect and educate him. He is still too young. She didn't bring him here to serve her at night. Rebellia thought she was the villainous, but only to a certain extent. She didn't want rumors about her bringing slaves into her room at night, no matter the country she was in. After some time, Caleb came. Rebellia asked about his magic studies. Caleb replied that the teacher complimented him today, saying it's amazing that he can use three circle magic at this stage. Suddenly, Caleb stated, Your Majesty, she would have forgiven him, he has been so busy lately that he hasn't had the chance to meet her. He is her guardian knight, but he still has shortcomings, which is why he thought she didn't want to see him anymore. He wants to help her in another way, he heard young slaves like him can provide special services for people of high status. If he can repay her, even with just this much, then suddenly he came close to kiss her. Rebellia stated that she appreciates that he wants to help her, but this is wrong. He is too young, and this is inappropriate, these kinds of things he should only do when he likes someone as an adult. Caleb came out of Rebellia's room and stated, What a shame, it's a good chance. The emperor asked, What chance is he talking about? The emperor continued, asking why Caleb had stopped by the empress's bedroom again. Caleb replied that yes, her majesty called him in because she was curious about his achievements, as he still had many shortcomings. The emperor stated that he was wondering if the slave knew who the emperor was when they met before. He guessed he was wrong. The slave is here thanks to the empress. If he betrayed her pure heart and had ill intentions, did he have anything to say for himself? Caleb replied that everything the emperor said was right. He thought he was just a slave and dared to have feelings for her majesty. However, the emperor had nothing to worry about since she only saw him as a brother. He wouldn't betray her kindness and would stay beside her majesty as her guardian knight. 
The emperor stated not to ever appear in front of him again. Caleb thought regarding that, it's hard for him to obey the emperor. On the other hand, Aisha stated, didn't he do a proper investigation? The investigator replied that it's not like that, he really couldn't find anything about the empress. It appears that she only lived in the Duke Manor before marriage, and after that, she has no activities outside. Aisha thought, how could it be, information of this world belongs to the public domain, so it's considered a serious crime to monopolize and withhold information about this world. It's impossible that there isn't any trace if she did something so dangerous, she was not sure if it's a book or someone, but Rebellia must have got the information from somewhere. Aisha shouted, this stupid, useless thing. Could he not find anything? She heard Rebellia's subordinates are all very competent, what is he doing? The investigator replied that's the thing. He heard a strange rumor during his investigation, he heard all the people he brought in are slaves. Aisha asked if this information was accurate and where the source was. The investigator said a store owner on La Mancha Street was the witness. Aisha thought La Mancha Street meant the grey market. The investigator continued, saying that, according to him, the empress brought along many guards, enjoyed shopping and bidding, and brought all the slaves there. Aisha wanted to know why there weren't any rumors. The investigator replied that he heard a reason for that, the day after, there were men in black who came to make the people there keep silent, and media agencies had a similar situation. Aisha thought that meant Rebellia blocked the flow of information, or it could also be the emperor. Aisha stated, for the time being, let's stop investigating Rebellia's background, instead, he has something else to do. She will make several copies of his announcement and pass them on to the media. It's better to use the trashy yellow paper usually for gossip. The investigator inquired about what he should do, he don't trust anyone there. Aisha stated, that's why the imperial family has little influence, even the most upright nobles would be curious about such vulgar gossip. It will have such a ripple effect, she likes making bets. After some time, the investigator thought he was not sure if this would work, no. He just needed to do what he was told. Whether there would be rumors or not, that's not his fault. The next day, the rumors spread that Her Majesty, the Empress, went to La Mancha Street. Nobles were gossiping, saying how embarrassing it was, and questioning how she could be so shameless. After all, she is the Empress, she even brought slaves and weird items. The boy asked if it was really all right to do this, the auditor in chief asked what he was talking about. The boy reply some anonymous source, sent letters stating that Her Majesty went to La Mancha Street, but there was nothing mentioning a secret lover. The auditor-in-chief stated that, Her Majesty purchased a large number of adult items on La Mancha Street, not everyone is aware of a relationship with the Emperor. Who does he think they are for? Of course, it's another man. The boy said it's just speculation and wondered if everything would be fine if he wrote articles like this about the imperial family. The auditor-in-chief replied, it's not speculation, it's a reasonable deduction. Even if it's not true, what can the imperial family do to them? They have freedom of speech according to the empire's law, so stop thinking about nonsense. The boy thought they printed more articles than ever but still couldn't meet demand. It's like someone deliberately spread rumors. On the other hand, the slave maid stated, please don't be bothered by what people are talking about. The empress is a righteous person, no one has such a pure and kind soul like her. Rebellia came to her room and shouted, it worked. She was wondering if she should spread the rumor because no one was saying anything. It's a success, if she wants a free life, she can't stop it from getting a divorce. She thought it would be best if she got kicked out. She is fine with the scandal, but it can affect Caleb and the kids. Things got to this point, she must find a way to attract all the negative attention. A maid came and stated, His Majesty is calling an emergency press conference, she must be there. Rebellia thought, Is he finally announcing their divorce? Then she thought she could go there to see what Alexander is planning. Rebellia stated she couldn't show up like this, and asked if the maid could help her prepare. 
Then the scene changed and the emperor arrived. The auditor-in-chief asked him to say something before the conference. How he was feeling, if he was going to have a divorce, and if it was true that he put pressure on the five daily newspapers. The emperor replied that he knew they were curious, but they should wait a bit more because the empress hadn't arrived yet. Rebellia came and stated, is she too late, but there was no other choice, she had to pay special attention to her makeup. Rebellia thought in this world, the same rules apply, like time, place, and occasion, a person must wear suitable clothes. Although it's an imperial rule to wear light colors at press conferences, she didn't have to follow such rules, besides, she didn't want to appear complacent to the reporters. Public opinion about her would be rock bottom like this, she attracted all the attention and a bad reputation. The emperor stated he don't want her wearing such a cut-out dress like this anymore, he doesn't suppose she will listen. Rebellia replied, that goes without saying, did he open this urgent conference first to announce something? The emperor replied that he couldn't let her know since she would find a way to fight it. The emperor stated before taking questions, he would like to tell them something. Everyone seems to have gathered here because the empress went to La Mancha Street. She ruined her reputation with her behavior. They all must be thinking that, right? However, she did not stain her virtue at all. She came there because he asked for it. Rebellia was shocked and thought, it can't be, this is a lie. The emperor stated he would make a statement now. The gray market in the capital on La Mancha Street belongs to him. The empress only went there because he asked her to conduct a special investigation. Rebellia thought, isn't that supposed to be a secret, how can he say it with such confidence? The emperor continued, yes, he has hidden this fact until now, but he is telling them because it's affecting his dear empress's reputation. Nothing in this world is more important than the fame of their empress, the empire's mother right. Rebellia thought this person is out of his mind, he looks like just a crazy person. The emperor asked if there were any other questions, giving them the opportunity to clear all doubts. The editor-in-chief asked if he could ask Her Majesty the Empress a question. According to this, she brought a large number of adult products on La Mancha Street. Did His Majesty also ask her to do this? If not, then what? Rebellia thought, that guy, despite everything about a mistress, does he want to talk about that? She mistakenly bought those things from the beginning, but she can't say that the emperor made her buy them. Even if she says so, the emperor has to play along well, how does she say that? The emperor stated, seems like there is a fact that the world is unaware of, and the baseless rumors that the empress has a mistress. Emperor stated he doesn't know why there is such a thing. It's just common sense that if a married person buys the necessary things for it, of course, it would be for someone in particular. A journalist asked, it doesn't make sense, is their relationship not that great? Then the matter with her highness is also involved with someone. The emperor told her that there are those who think that her favorite slave is also her lover, and one of them just raised the question. Rebellia replied that person was Caleb, she told him her relationship with the child is not what they think it is. The emperor told him they should match their story, they value their people, right? Rebellia thought she had no other choice, no wonder why things seem complicated, but this is the best for Caleb as there might be strange rumors. Rebellia stated honestly, this is embarrassing, what they heard is the truth. She came to La Mancha Street as His Majesty requested, and she just bought the things he asked to buy for them, there is no space for mistresses or anything like that in their relationship. The Emperor stated, of course, his relationship with the Empress is great, is that not right, Empress, they had such a heated night yesterday. Rebellia replied, of course. Rebellia thought, is this not too much? She can't believe there is a day when she has to tell others about her heated night with a man. Don't imperial family members have privacy? Unexpectedly, the press conference ended with great responses, and almost immediately, from the evening newspapers, and day articles about them were printed. Rebellia thought she knew this would happen, she is fine, but what about the children brought from La Mancha? 
the servants in the imperial palace have strong instincts, and luckily, the kids are working hard. Rebellia's maids appreciated their work, and despite that they are slaves, she had never seen them get bullied, but it's impossible to expect everyone to accept them. On the other hand, other maids are mumbling, look over there, is not he a slave? One of the maids stated, is he the one who came from La Mancha Street at the request of the queen? How dare he walk around with his head held high in the palace when he is a slave? Then she punched Caleb and stated his mistake, he needed to go wash up quickly, he got something dirty on him. Keep walking around with his head down like that, that posture suits him well. Maids and staff of the palace were mumbling, there was a commotion earlier. Someone asked, who is the main Jajak Nyung? The other person replied, the person who had a fall accident just now. Because of that, one of their legs is now broken, they didn't know how he became a knight. Caleb stated, who knows, were they a reader of the main Jajak, now with a broken leg, he is just like a slave. There is no knight order that specifically assigns knights to pulling horses' legs. So, since this matter is resolved, now it's time to go back, they can't cause any worries for Her Majesty, the Empress. Then the scene changed, Banya thought, don't try to respond in kind, it could lead to insulting Her Majesty, the Empress. Other maids were mumbling, look at that, the slave stupidly tripped alone, maybe her actions are sluggish because she is a lowly slave. They say all slaves are ignorant and vulgar, but seeing him, it might be true. One of the maids stated her clothes got dirty, but something like that doesn't suit a slave like her. What is she doing? Hurry up and take it, it's her belonging. Rebellia stated, don't touch that dirty thing, Banya thought, your highness, the empress. Rebellia continued, if she touches that, her hands will get dirty, she should not make the hands that work for her dirty. Banya replied, yes, she apologizes. Rebellia stated, there is no need for her to apologize. What she wants to hear is, it's over there. Rebellia stated she is talking about that dirty piece of cloth, it seems like it suits their mouths better than her handmaiden's hand. The maid apologized and stated that it's all because of loyalty to the royal family, so please understand deeply. They couldn't just sit by and watch as their work with such a heterodox person live in the palace. How could they stay in the palace where Her Majesty and other dignitaries reside? Rebellia stated, Do she know what she is saying right now? The child was personally chosen by her and brought into the palace, yet she is doubting her judgment and decision. What else would it be but a challenge to her authority, from now on, she will consider insulting the children she brings in as a disrespecting arrangement. Rebellia continued, she will regard it as a challenge to the authority of the Empress, and punish accordingly under imperial law, take it to heart. Banya thought, as expected, she is the Empress, she is so cool. Rebellia thought, this should be enough for this time, but there is still a long way to go. Even if they say that slavery and the inhuman treatment of half-caste people are not acceptable and that all humans are equal, it may be understood. As these incidents may continue to happen, they should consider relocating the slave's workplace. Banya stated, Excuse me, your highness, she just wanted to express her sincere gratitude. Thank you so much for helping her, your majesty. Rebellia stated she didn't have any intention of helping her, it was just to scold those arrogant kids, that's not what she thinks, Banya. Maid Banya was surprised that Empress knew her name, she remembered her name even though she is just a slave. How can she express this emotion, she really respects her, your majesty. After some time, Rebellia thought they came to her from morning till night, asking not to relocate the slave's workplace. They pleaded with her to let them stay by her side saying they would work even harder from now on. Rebellia told them there is no need for that, they shouldn't overwork themselves or do things for the sake of her reputation and authority. Rebellia told them that, but it even had the opposite effect, as a result, the slaves have been praising and adoring the empress everywhere they go. Rebellia thought, a reputation is needlessly rising, why does she feel like everything she does lately has an extraordinary effect? 
Rebellia thought it was useless to just buy clothes and indulge in luxury now, but she can't just stop indulging in luxury. All the clothes and jewelry will become her assets, but she will keep working, she has been studying tax law in her spare time these days. She should open a small office in a suitable mid-sized city, she wants to create a small and pretty garden that can be managed alone, that's enough to be happy. Suddenly, the emperor arrived and stated, he had been intentionally visiting around the Wangbi Palace and Garden these days. It was not easy to catch a glimpse of her face, he would be happy to see her more often, what does she think? Rebellia replied that she thought he would have gone through unnecessary trouble, since they are not on such familiar terms, please tell her the reason for coming here in person. The emperor stated, today is Friday night dinner party, he hopes she can definitely attend. Rebellia replied that she didn't like it. The emperor stated, he also thought that if he were you, he would most likely answer that. But probably he hopes she know it's been a week since the last press conference. Certainly, public opinion is suspicious of the hot relationship between him and her. That's natural because they have not spoken to each other in a week. Rebellia asked if he came here to threaten her. Maybe there will be rumors that she has a lover hiding among the slaves she brings back. The emperor stated, threaten, how can that happen? He is just worried because she seemed to be very kind and respectful of those slaves. Is this really okay? Rumors like that would become quite a barrier to the slaves' future days, she just need to join the party and shine there. We will take care of the rest on our own. Show them that no one can doubt our relationship any longer. Rebellia replied, okay, she will do it, however, her participation in that troublesome party, please think this will be the last time. The emperor replied, that's a wise judgment indeed. Rebellia thought it felt like being swept away by this person's will, but she didn't want the future days of people like Caleb and Banya to be blocked by her. It's not a terrible thing after all. It's just pretending to be close to each other for once, it was an act she has been doing until now. Then the scene changed nobles were talking about. What's the matter with Her Majesty the Queen? They didn't expect her to dress so elegantly for this setting. Emperor stated, Why, is she in a hurry? It's not good. She needs to be here with him so he will not be lonely. Rebellia shouted, Too late. Why is he so late? She is very terrified. The Emperor replied, She made him sad. The party will begin in at least ten more minutes. First, she just needs to trust him. He will solve everything that makes her tired at this party, she just needs to stay by his side. Aisha thought it's late when she finishes, but it's fine because she is perfect today. The person who dresses flashy to get people's attention is not her enemy, she is loved by people like her. Aisha thought people are saying she is here, the queen, she is very beautiful today, like a god. Aisha replied, oh my, please don't say that. Then Aisha realized something is weird, everyone's attention is somewhere else. She saw Emperor and Empress are kissing. Aisha heard voices of nobles saying that their relationship is very good, so it's the truth. They are curious about what happened in the morning. The Emperor loves his wife like that, even Drakima III must cry and run away. Aisha was sweating, then she was gone away. The Emperor stated, how does she feel? He thinks this is enough to trick everyone. Rebellia thought that they would kiss, but they just pretend. Emperor stated it's a bit too much, but he is sure it works, look around, all believe it. Rebellia replied, that is true, so she is looking forward to tomorrow's newspaper. On the other hand, Aisha shouted, why did she break it, this is what she likes. No, she just broke it, she can't do that, but that isn't cute anymore. It's very weird. Alexander, that person, it should have been her. This is the fate of this story. In this story, the emperor has to choose her, a lovely girl like her, but somehow, how did he go against his destiny and choose that girl? Now she doesn't care about anything, she has to get rid of her. This is not cruel. This is power. That's what the royal palace is like. If she wants to be the head of the empire, if she wants to have that power in her hand, she has to do this, it's all because of her. 
In order to reverse the predestined fate, she must have done a lot of terrible things, so this is nothing. She is doing these things to go against that false argument and to show off the name of a saint. If so, then Alexander will also follow the fate in the original and love her. If she wants to get back what she has been robbed of, this is why he is here, she has to be determined. After some time, the noble ladies stated they heard the queen's palace is finished. The other one replied, Yes, his majesty has decorated the housewares to celebrate the completion of the palace. It is said that the queen is not satisfied, she is not sure if it's true. The queen said she doesn't like those gifts right in front of his majesty, the queen led nearly thirty slaves to the palace. If a noble did that, he wouldn't be able to raise his head, and yet the queen did it, Aisha stated, don't exaggerate like that, perhaps the queen has her own reasons. The noble lady stated, why does she have to speak up for the girl who is her love rival like that, is not it that right, Duke Schwarzkopf, he has not said a word since then. Duke stated he is just listening. The noble lady stated Duke owes his royal highness a great favor, and yet he is not angry at the queen's misdeed. Duke replied, is she telling him to say bad things about the queen, he has to go first, Duke stated he thinks if he was still here, there would be nothing funny. Also, his highness the royal consort, he tells her this with allegiance from the bottom of his heart, in the eastern folk song, there is a sentence like this. A man is known by the company he keeps, the point of this sentence is that if they try to get along with bad people, everything they hear and see is just wrong. In the end, they will see and learn from those wrong things, Aisha replied she will always be grateful to him for his kind words. After the duke, Aisha thought, Duke Schwarzkopf, he is just a quiet obstinate person, but she didn't expect it to be this far. Anyway, it's best to let him be stubborn and tame it to some extent, she can use him later. Maids came and stated, Her Royal Highness, Queen, please wake up. Rebellia replied, Just five minutes, maids told her, now is not the time to sleep. Please hurry up and read the newspaper. Rebellia asked, How is her voice? Did they cry? Maids replied, They are not allowed to cry during working hours. Rebellia responded, They are not machines, how can they not cry during working hours? Rebellia read the newspaper, in which articles criticized the act of bringing thirty heretic slaves into the queen's palace, portraying it as an act of contempt for the former empress. The maid told her that articles like this are not just a few, they have checked and found seven articles with similar content. His Majesty was only indignant at the slaves' mistreatment, so he brought them back. Rebellia thought these kids are not being honest with her, if that's the case, she will probably be happy with this criticism, but for those who love her, it will most likely be hard to bear. Rebellia stated that she has told them she caused these things to facilitate divorce, so they don't need to worry and be sad because of articles that criticize her. She feels very happy because she is about to reach her goal. The maid stated, but she is a great person, they all hope she is happy. Rebellia thought, come to think of it, she has never been this worried before, because her family in her previous life was not as good as a stranger, and her lover or friend is not also. So this is what it feels like. The feelings of being loved by people she only met in novels, but she can't say those things to them. Rebellia stated she can't become happy when she is with his majesty, the emperor, the maid asked why. Rebellia replied, because he doesn't love her, he only cares about the royal consort and only loves the royal consort, it won't change, now it's only temporary. Rebellia thought because in the end, the main characters of the story are those two people. The maid spoke, your majesty, she has a wish. Suppose his majesty the emperor confirms that, he will love only your majesty in the future then please take back your decision to want a divorce. Rebellia replied, all right, she promises. Rebellia thought they always found Rebellia loves to that extent, so of course, they think so. If it's for the sincere children, she promises it's fine. Such is the case, is it clear, Aisha? Then the scene changes, Aisha stated, Lady Selimon, do she understand? Lady Selimon replied, 
Of course, however, she does have a concern. If this spreading of rumors about the queen is discovered, will there be any great damage? Aisha stated, Oh, Duchess, if she says that, it's like I am spreading rumors. This is always true, that the Empress had brought thirty slaves into the palace, it's just a reminder of what everyone is forgetting. Poor Duchess Selimon, do not worry too much, rumors run on their feet and move on their own. It would be impossible even for the great sage of the Mage Tower to find out the source of the widely spread rumors. And she believes in the great popularity and influence of the Duchess, the fact that she will be of great help to her. After some time, Aisha thought about what she would do next to bring her down. According to imperial law, there are five conditions for an empress to be deposed, she tries to rebel. When the crimes of murdering the imperial family are committed. When she does something harmful to the security of our country, with a foreign country on her back, or when the public opinion of the country turns noticeably away from the empress. It is also one of the conditions when the empress significantly undermines the authority of the imperial family. It seems that the emperor is completely bewitched and has no intention of doing so. Aisha thought she must have used medicine, magic, or a curse. She can't figure this out right away, so all she has left is a pole. If public opinion becomes strong enough to shake the country, the emperor won't be able to do anything. Now the whole world seems to be her. She will definitely take everything away, even if she crawls under her feet, it's already too late. In the next scene, Caleb stated, Good job, now tell him all the sounds she heard. How can it be so obvious and shallow that she can see through it, noble consort? Caleb thought the maid seemed suspicious, so he would try to find out. To say that she is a pure and lovely consort is actually nonsense. Innocence is just a mask of someone who has what she wants, even him right now. The really pure one is a person like Her Majesty, the Empress. Then how does he use this, he hopes she will tell him later, consort. How does it feel to let herself fall into her own tricks? Then the scene changes a noble lady stated, Her Highness looks so beautiful, they are so grateful that she invited an ordinary couple to such a noble place. Aisha replies, she also looks great. Then she thinks, good, this is working well, people can see what she is capable of, she needs everyone to know, the crown princess will be the perfect empress. For the sake of her reputation, the party must be a success. Duke Norman Schwarzkopf is the duke in the northern part of the empire, which is full of demonic beasts. The child had red eyes and silver hair, rare colors in the empire, so he was like half human, half monster. She was the only person who was nice to him, and he opened up to her, if she can tame him well, it will greatly benefit her reputation. Aisha stated, is everyone ready to have fun today? She prepared a performance for them. Aisha thinks she is confident when it comes to playing the piano, she has learned it since she was a kid. Nobles are starting to appreciate her, it was excellent. Aisha stated she will perform the mask, a concerto, so she will use the accompaniment. When Aisha starts the performance, suddenly a voice comes from the instrument. Suddenly the voice came Madame Selimon, what did her words mean, but concerned about the Empress, in the end, it's the truth that just the Duchess. Nobles were mumbling it sounds like her highness voice. Then the voice came, the truth is it will help her so much. Suddenly, Aisha breaks the instrument. Aisha thought it stopped, but everyone is looking at her. Aisha stated it was fake. She would never spread bad rumors about Her Majesty the Empress. She has only been here for less than a year. She has not fully understood the Empire. How could she ever do such a thing? Duke stated it's not only less than a year. It should be a year already. Your Highness, she still has not learned about the Empire as she should. That's what she is saying. As a result, the duties that she has to carry out as the crown princess, she has done them untruthfully. Aisha asked Duke if he doesn't trust her, she is not the person who said those things, and he knows it. Duke replied that he thought he knew it just a minute ago, he had faith in her kindness. But that thing in the exclusive property in the Imperial Palace, 
It's an instrument created for criminal investigation and national defense security, so fabrication is not possible. Aisha stated, Does that mean he doesn't believe her? Is he saying that she made up false rumors about Her Majesty? Aisha thought she didn't expect Duke to show up like this, but it's all right, he will let it go once he sees her cry. Now Duke, hurry up, say that he trusts her, Duke stated he regrets it, but he cannot trust her anymore, he can't deny the fact in front of him to cover up for her. After the Duke left, Aisha thought, did someone swap the SP copy of the magic item? Why exactly? Who was it? Why would anyone harm her like this? Then, after some time, Rebellia asked if that really happened. The maid replied, Yes, isn't it karma? She is always acting to be kind. It's fake. She must also punish her for this. Rebellia stated, Who could it be? The person who changed the SP copy. She wonders who. Maybe it's someone who is capable of faking a magic item. A maid came and stated, Your Majesty the Empress, she has a guest. Rebellia thought it's that person, then she stated, Tell him that she is sleeping. The Emperor came and stated that he knew she would say that, so he came here directly, anyway, he guessed it was a wise choice. Rebellia replied, Don't he know it's rude to come into another person's room without permission? Emperor reply it's a great offense to lie to the emperor, but of course, we can't blame her because she is the exception to everything, indeed, red looks good on her. Rebellia stated she didn't know what he were about to say, but she has a question for him. Does he know about the incident at the crown princess's party? What about the culprit who replaced the SP? The emperor replied he didn't expect her to ask about that first, he assumed she would ask how she would be punished. They are still investigating to find the person behind it. Traces of eavesdropping magic items were found in her office. But apart from that, there was not anything else, whoever it is, they are careful. Aisha thought she didn't think the emperor did it, then it must be someone who is hostile towards the holy empire, who could it be? The emperor asked if he plans to put Aisha on probation for three months and cut the budget, so is that enough? Rebellia thought he was asking him if the punishment should be more severe. It's tempting. Aisha is very annoying, and it bothers her. Rebellia stated, No, actually, actions help her. It's fine for her if she can ruin her reputation to get away from him. The emperor replied it's such a strategic move, but he is afraid it will hurt her. He is not talking about physical injuries. He fears that her feelings will get hurt. Rebellia spoke. What, as she said, it's beneficial for her. The emperor replied, it's different. Everyone's feelings are hurt by criticism. She doesn't want to show her weakness, so she tries to let people think she is holding on well. But if she is tired, he hopes she will tell the truth and seek help, even if it's not him. Rebellia thought, why is he saying that now, she will mistake those words of concern, that she has never heard in her life with sincere feelings although, he knows it's just a lie. Rebellia stated, Your Majesty, she didn't know he cared so much about her feelings, she wonders what kind of person would abandon her for the last three years. Rebellia thought she is a formal normal office employee in Korea, she loves romance stories and usually watches movies of the same genre. But if a stranger tries to approach, she won't be swayed, she will think, what is this ex doing? Rebellia is different from her because she longs for Emperor's love more than anyone. She can't understand why she loves him so much. Maybe it explains why that happened. The Emperor thought, what was he about to say? Did he want to apologize so he could escape this situation? That's not what he wants. If only she shows him the same smile she shows everyone else, then for my own benefits, he can pretend to apologize as many times as she wants, but with her. Rebellia stated, Your Majesty, she should not have said that, it's just. No, it's nothing. The Emperor thought if she is physically and mentally hurt, she would not be so willing to do things for her, that's why he is concerned. The Emperor stated he has a favor to ask, can't she give him another chance, just once, if he gives him another chance, he won't disappoint her. He will give her anything she wants, he will create the image of the perfect life she wants. 
she won't regret that she chose to be with him just for a moment. That's what he will try to do, so, as long as she doesn't leave him, he will ask again. Does she still want to leave him after hearing all of this? Rebellia replied, yes, she doesn't care about it, she just wants to get away from him. She wants to make this clear, the life that she wants, the happiness that she seeks, she can't ever get that if she is with him. It's not power or money that she needs, she honestly just wants a happy life, so, no matter what kind of offer he makes, she won't change her mind. Rebellia thought, the emperor is even if he lies, he is not someone who won't keep his promises. If she chooses to be by his side, she will have everything, great wealth, great power, all the things she doesn't want. No matter how much money and power he has, if he is not someone who truly cares for her and values her. The emperor stated, does she know what it means to swear to Mestapo? Rebellia replied, yes, she knows, if he breaks his oath, he will die in a sea of fire. The emperor stated, great, then from now on, she will understand the importance of what he is going to say. He swears to Mestapo right here, he will not let her go, no matter what happens in the future. Rebellia shouted, What is that? How can he do this? The emperor continued, From this moment on, there are only two ways for her to get rid of, either she dies, or he dies. If he gives up on her while he is alive, it's okay for him to burn in the sea of fire in the world of immortality after death. Rebellia stated, he recklessly made such an oath to her without saying a word, cancel it right away. The emperor replied, it's no use, it is called an oath since it cannot be reversed, just get used to being by her side, if she doesn't leave, she can do anything she wants. Rebellia thought she is doomed, why did he swear to Mestapo? The maid told her she was wondering if the empress was going to sponsor this month as well. Rebellia replied, Okay, this time the library and the hospital, she thinks it would be good to do it at the orphanages she mentioned last time. Rebellia thought he has been sponsoring for seven months. She thinks it's okay to use it for good things rather than simple luxury. The maid asked if anything happened between the empress and the emperor at that time. Rebellia replied, the truth is he swore to Mestapo, trying to force someone to stay by his side is just an obsession. Rebellia thought it's time to change the plan. There is only one way to stand out, without thorough preparation, she would not be able to break through the palace security. An outsider who doesn't blink at the emperor's wealth and power, suddenly, a maid came and stated they have a guest that came suddenly. Rebellia asked about an unscheduled guest. The maid replied that the person is Duke Norman Schwarzkopf. Rebellia thought in terms of importance, he is not a character greater than Caleb, the gentle guy who makes readers cry in the original novel. Rebellia stated it's okay, just call him in. Let's see what he comes to talk about. After some time, Rebellia stated it's an honor to meet him. Duke replied that he is also honored to meet the queen. Rebellia stated, why did the royal concubine's close relatives come here to find her? Duke replied, Indeed, does the queen also think that he is a close consort of the royal concubine? Rebellia asked, Is it not? Duke replied he will not deny it, but his visit to the queen this time has nothing to do with the royal concubine. He didn't come here to spy on the queen. Rebellia asked, So what for? Other than that, she really doesn't know why he is here. Duke asked if she remembered the St. Joshua Orphanage. Rebellia replied that she remembers, she donated to that place, but what does that have to do with the Duke? Duke asked why she is donating such a large amount of money to that place. Rebellia replied whether she aids the orphanage or not has nothing to do with him. Because of that, he suddenly came here without an appointment, can't he be aware of whose safety this place is concerned with? Duke stated shame on her. He didn't mean to say rude things, however, so many people listen to it, he can't explain, please take it back. Caleb stated no way. What purpose did he come here for? They can't leave two people alone here. Rebellia stated no, everyone got out a little bit. Then Rebellia stated she has asked them to leave as he wishes, please tell her the situation quickly. Duke replied, actually, 
he has an illegitimate child, Rebellia was shocked. Looks like she needs to mentally prepare for this, that's sure it's unintentional, isn't it? Duke replied the baby's name is Ernst, the people around seem to call the child a runt, and the child is currently living in an orphanage. Rebellia stated that he secretly investigated the person who anonymously funded the orphanage, Duke replied that's right, he thought maybe there was a conspiracy. Rebellia asked she want to know why he sent his son to the orphanage. Duke replied it was the will of the child's mother, the mother told him that, so that the child is not suppressed by the prejudice of being a monster. It would be better to leave the child and send him to the orphanage, she must have seen his appearance, that's why, a half-human, half-horse monster, has to live with that bad reputation for life. Once he is sure, he will pass the title of Duke on to the child, so he kept listening to the news and supporting the orphanage, however, he feels there will be limits. The more this sponsorship amount spreads, the first rumor will eventually spread, someone will question that amount, and there will also be people who want to solve that problem. As a result, maybe the fact that Ernst is his baby will be exposed, then another sponsor has appeared, and he will be happy. Thanks to that sponsor, even if he stops sponsoring, then his child will also be able to live in a better environment. At first, he thought this sponsor was the royal concubine. Of course, she would pity such children, but no, it's the queen, no reason to support, the real queen, someone he respects. On the other hand, the emperor thought he clearly did what he wanted to do, he said what he wanted to say. He decided to go against her intentions, but how come it looks like that girl now gets away from him? The emperor thought he feels like he is sinking deeper into the mud, he is lost in emotions, annoying and weird, guilt. He is now regretting his actions, he should not have said that to her, if only he respected her as she is. If so, then now she would have smiled at him. Wake up, Alexander, she is just a greedy talent. Why did he climb to this position and forget that? Aisha came and stated she missed him, so that's why she came to find him. The emperor thought she has an intention to come here, that deliberately roundabout appearance, no way isn't it pretense and an effective tool? The royal concubine was just using the words of an ordinary noble, but no, what he feels is tired, the emperor asked if something is wrong. Aisha replied she got the news that from tomorrow until the next three months, the budget will be cut, she always follows his instructions, so please have mercy on her for once. The emperor stated if she really thinks she follows his instructions, does she remember the contract she signed? She also doesn't know how to handle matters in the palace properly. She is not familiar with the imperial culture either. The story puts her in the royal position with that saintess, as a noble and pure talent. He was hoping she would hold that position, but she can't keep it. The foolish actions she can make, he can't count. The honor of her family has been trampled by her, in the mud and thwarted his plans and goals. So, follow his instructions or, for that matter. Aisha replied she is an evil person unable to follow his instructions, he can't just throw her out of the palace. According to the law, the royal couple cannot divorce, so she is a holy woman, she has to follow that rule. Then before the empire's diplomatic relations were changed, she and the emperor cannot divorce, your majesty, she needs him, he knows that too, she will never abandon him. She will always be by his side and give him what he wants, she will forever be different from her. The emperor laughed and stated she is braver than when they first met, she doesn't feel sorry for her life anymore. Aisha suddenly couldn't move, feeling a murderous intent. The emperor stated she made a misunderstanding, different from her, she can't replace her position, no matter what she does, no matter how hard she tries, so the result is the same. Suddenly. A secretary came and asked, Your Highness, is something wrong? The emperor replied, No, it's nothing. Aisha was surprised. Then the scene changed and the secretary spoke, The queen is having a private discussion with Duke Norman Schwarzkopf. Then he heard he suddenly came over without an appointment. The emperor thought, All of a sudden, why did she do that? The closest person of the royal consort, just don't like it. 
The emperor asked, Where is the queen? The secretary replied, The two of them are currently in the garden. Suddenly, the emperor was shocked, the duke was kissing Rebellia's hand. The emperor stated, Did something amazing happen in front of his eyes? Rebellia was shocked. The emperor stated, Duke, it seems that kneeling and kissing other people's wives' hands are popular in the North these days. Duke replied, He is just showing courtesy. It is a courtesy that the queen must, of course, accept. He didn't know he would shock his majesty like that. He heard apparently in the capital loving a married person, it's not strange at all. Rebellia thought, what is this, why did the emperor suddenly come to cause trouble, and the duke, is he sure he has to say that, he looks like he has a dark heart. The emperor stated, surely the capital culture is to have the pursuit of free communication, but that was just a covert action. Making a decent statement in front of that person, isn't it the actions of the pleasantries? Duke replied, with an official wife, is it normal to have another friend in the palace? Emperor stated he also didn't know why the polite duke showed up like this, he would give him some advice. In the capital, it is better to be careful with his conduct, if it hurts the emperor's honor, then even his honor will be defiled. Rebellia thought, maybe he is talking about Aisha, why is he, who is close to the imperial consort, suddenly approaching her? Duke stated he didn't deny his old friend, but now he is facing a sincere attitude towards the queen, he will not harm the queen. He came today without an appointment, he apologized and would contact her later, your majesty. Rebellia thought, even though it was so brief, that hurricane-like situation was over, the emperor seemed to have something to say, but that had nothing to do with her. On the other hand, a woman is telling her son to keep silent. Suddenly, a man stated, Mr. Minister, he has a message from the saint. The minister replied, Really? Please wait, he has work here first. The minister stated her husband has been helping her spy for a holy kingdom organization for half a year. Even so, her husband also proved that he is not intelligent. The result happened before her eyes like that. Well, now he won't waste any more time. God wants the same. Hurry to answer, lady. The lady replied, actually, she know her husband, he agreed with that organization, even hiding intelligence because of that. The minister asked for the current residence of the intelligence agent. The lady replied she really didn't know that, she always protested her husband's actions. Obviously, it will become a threat to the family, so she really didn't know anything. The minister stated, now the story she told him is over, all right he will send her to God's arms. The minister thought maybe the saintess was very tired, then there is no other way but to stand up for him. She is not strong enough to deal with the immediate problem. Then the scene changed, Rebellia thought, come to think of it, the possessor of tremendous power and wealth, Death Northern Territory, is a good place to hide from the emperor. Even if she wants a divorce, as a result, she just unilaterally brought other people's situations into play. But there is no other way, she decided to think only of herself, be a selfish girl. After some time, Rebellia stated, she just called him because she needed him, is everything he said in the last meeting true? Duke replied, yes, my queen, wear his Mestapo oath not to lie at all. Rebellia stated, so let's be honest this time, as she listened to his story, she would be very grateful if he would listen to her story, Duke replied, of course, he will. On the other hand, the emperor thought, this thing can't be cooperated, Duke said he was headed to the queen's palace. Rebellia is having a private conversation with him, they will let me servants out, she doesn't even like to run into him by chance. One thing has become clear, she does not care about him at all. At the empress palace, Rebellia stated, her story here is over, she really wants to divorce the emperor, in this boring palace, she is looking for a way to leave, so she wonders, do you know any way? Duke replied, if so, queen, what about escaping abroad? Rebellia asked if he listened carefully to her story. Duke stated she told her story, he listened carefully, if she needs his help, no matter how synergistically. Rebellia replied, Saying these words is just to take advantage of him, 
there is no benefit to him at all. Duke replied, please take advantage of it, he just needs to be the queen's tool, he's satisfied then. He is certain will become her most useful tool. After some time, the rumors about Rebellia and Duke were growing rapidly, maids were mumbling that both of them had a fair here. Caleb thought he had enough to worry about with the emperor, it looks like he had someone else to be concerned about. At the palace the maid stated not to listen to any of the rumors going around these days. Rebellia replied she is fine. She is not paying attention to them. Rebellia thought she is actually worried to death about it. People were saying that she was having an affair with the Duke. It looks like the people here love rumors. Duke said that he was going to look into how to go to the duchy. He also told her not to feel burdened about this. She is not brazen enough to have someone who says they want to help her, for nothing in return and stares at her with those eyes and not feel any sort of burden. Rebellia stated, did all of her things arrive from Aisha Palace? The maid replied, yes, keep all of the things that she is not using in the spare room for now. When Rebellia entered the Empress Palace, she was shocked and asked, what is he doing here? Emperor replied, it seemed like there was a commotion in the Empress Palace, Duke seems to come here fine. Rebellia thought it seems like he is coming to see her often these days, then she stated, he is very courteous as well. Emperor stated that, as she must know, he is Aisha, right-hand man, he is not someone she should keep near her just because it's nice to chat with him. Rebellia replied it looks like Emperor is worried that she will become a lover, and that she will taint the imperial family's reputation. But he doesn't have to worry about death, she is not interested in love anymore. Emperor stated, Rebellia, he. Rebellia did not listen and told the maid, let's start organizing. Put everything from here to over there in the emerald room. Suddenly, a box came toward her. Rebellia was shocked. The next thing Rebellia heard was the voice saying, Your Majesty, is she all right? Rebellia was trembling. The emperor picked her up and stated they would find out after a checkup. Rebellia said, Put her down, and emperor replied that he couldn't be sure yet. The doctor stated, Thank goodness, Her Majesty doesn't seem to have any injuries. He thinks she was just surprised. Rebellia stated she told him that she was fine, and it was nothing to make a fuss over. The emperor replied he was glad he brought her over here, and she was lucky she didn't get hurt, but what if she were hurt, then she must have it treated as soon as possible. After some time, Rebellia spoke, saying she was fine this time, so there was no need to worry for her. The emperor stated it didn't matter what she thought, he couldn't help but worry about her, even if it's a one in a million chance, just imagining her getting hurt is unbearable. Rebellia thought she knew the emotions he was exuding from his eyes right now. He wasn't pretending to be gracious, he was desperate. Those were the eyes of someone who had lost someone and did not want to lose anyone ever again. Alexander's background was only mentioned briefly in the original novel, he was the son of the 17th consort, who had no power or influence. He was a prince in name only, his mother always told him to hide himself and not stand out, and it was a wise decision. The old emperor had become obsessed with religion and failed to look overheads the empire. The late consort did her best to protect herself and her son, but despite her efforts, she eventually died quite early. Princes and princesses pointed their swords at each other and eventually, only a few candidates were left to succeed the crown. Alexander stepped out from the shadows, he had gathered his troops little by little after his mother's death, and suddenly attacked the imperial palace at the right time. Rebellia thought she felt sorry for him but she had never thought of them, to be in such a similar position, no it's nothing to do with that. At the Aisha palace, maids were mumbling that it seemed like he was in deep shock from what happened last time but they hoped she regained her energy soon. Aisha thought, because they deceived her, everyone is on that woman's side. Suddenly, Aisha heard a voice calling her a saintess. Do she hear him? Aisha replied, yes, father she is right here. Father stated she didn't respond to all his attempts to contact her, so he thought the divine stone he gave her was broken. Aisha replied she was simply doing well. The emperor and other people were taking good care of her, 
she became the emperor once she got rid of that woman. Father said, it's a sin to lie, he is sure she know this. Aisha apologized, stating she did her best, but father said she didn't have to make excuses. He's on his way to the empire right now, and plans on staying at the imperial palace as an honored guest from the holy nation. He will help her to the best of his ability, and they must push that foolish woman off the throne, crowning the right person as empress, this is God's will. Aisha replied she would trust everything he said and would do whatever he told her to. Father stated he hoped that's not a lie, and asked her to prove it by making one more contract with him. People were mumbling that Her Highness was secretly helping the poor, which is why an imperial poverty relief fund would be created. The Empress is very kind, she spends so much money on commoners, honestly, it's very admirable. At the Imperial Palace, the Emperor stated it seemed like everything was going well. A noble replied, yes, do he think it will be all right, Her Majesty may be against her name being used. The Emperor stated, no, that's not likely, Rebellia is gracious to the weak, even if the fund being named after her bothers her, she won't be against the establishment of a fund for commoners. The emperor thought he didn't know how it was revealed that Rebellia was helping the poor, but he must take this opportunity to increase her influence and prevent her from leaving. At the empress palace, a maid asked what she was going to do now regarding Duke Blanchett and the count. Rebellia replied, yes, it's been so long since she last saw her family, so she want to look presentable. After some time, Duke thanked her for giving them such a warm welcome, Rebellia replied, not at all, Duke Blanchett, we are family. Rebellia thought they didn't come to see her for three years, and now they suddenly came. Rebellia stated, what is it that they want to say? Duke replied they are going through a difficult time in House Blanchett, they must sell the castle to repair their debt. They did everything they could, but there is nothing they can do now, so they need help just once. Rebellia said, so that's what they wanted in the end, they want her to give them money. Rebellia threw tea at Duke and stated, how bold of him to say that when he sold her off, why did he not sell their castle or land back then? That would have been better than selling their daughter. She don't care if House Blanchett declines or not, she is not their family anymore, they are strangers now. Rebellia thought she tried so hard to forget about them, and she thought she had forgotten all about them, but why are memories of them surging up now? Why does it hurt so much, this is nothing, so don't cry, she must endure this, once she gets to the Empress Palace, then she can cry as she would like. The Emperor is watching her through the window, the Emperor thought her eyes. Like this video. Hit the like button and subscribe for more videos.